All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, does anybody, before I, like, do all the final stuff, does anybody have any lightning talks that they wanted to get out of the way real quick? Nope. Excellent. Well, uh, so that's it. Thanks, everybody. I hope. <laughs> Beat it. No. Um, so quick, quick, quick question. So um, I guess we've had three years over and over and like it's going to be here, it's going to be here, it's going to be here. Yeah. So do you know roughly when the next venue, because I think that this was a good, I think people like this venue. I think people love Park City. They loved uh, Puerto Rico. Well, except the distance. Right. So I am curious when we'll find out about the next venue. Um, and then I guess also what, I think one of the things that is helpful in the past is when maintainers could give their four minutes and 59 seconds about their, what happened the last year. Um, because so many people have different perspectives on what excited them over the last year. Right. Um, and um, I don't know if that's a good thing to add to the schedule in the future. Yeah, so uh, as far as next year, clearly we don't have anything yet. Uh, Linux Foundation has um, asked if we would well like to be co-located with uh, um, OSS, which is in Vancouver next year, around the same time, I think it's like May 7th. Um, there, I don't particularly care as long as, you know, our stuff is separate, doesn't bother me. Uh, one thing that I would like to try to do is maybe increase the size of LSFFM. I'm just wondering what you guys thought about that because, you know, I would like the, you know, selfishly I would like the opportunity to bring my junior engineers here. Um, and I think that, you know, increasing the size of LSFFM would help me accomplish that. Um, I don't think, you know, we don't go to like 900 people, but, you know, uh, this year I think we ended up with a little under 100 attendees. Figure, you know, the probably 10 guys that normally show up were virtual, so call it 100 people normally show up to this thing, so say double it, 200 people. Um, I think this would be worthwhile for us to kind of allow us to bring in, I, we're all pretty old here, <laughs> at least I feel old. And uh, it's nice to bring in junior engineers, at least so they get used to the names and faces and are a little less intimidated. Tim. Yeah, I didn't know. So I have a couple of very junior members on my team that I wouldn't have thought would have been eligible for LSF MM, even if we're going to grow it uh, significantly, especially given how big the FS track is. But if we're going to be co-locating with OSS, the advantage is I can send them to OSS and then I can do an EXT4 meetup regardless of whether we're going to actually, you know, get all of our, you know, junior contributors to our big file systems uh, invites to LSF MM. Right. So that'd be the other advantage of co-location. Okay. The other thing that jumped out at me when I was preparing for um, helping internally at Microsoft on a Linux course was I stumbled across things where BPF helps us. Yep. So I'm being very selfish here. A few years ago, we all were blown away when the keynote for this was BPF telling us everything we, did, we needed to know about debugging. Right. That was a 10 out of 10 useful thing. But as an example, at the storage developer conference, they kicked off one of the things with a 45 minute presentation on how to debug Linux file systems. Right. So a BPF guy, Dr. Hani Namadi, gave a talk, one of the BPF guys gave a talk about how to debug everything you've been talking about in your presentations. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure that the same thing applies to blocks. So I think we can cheat, and if we can, and borrow the BPF guys for at least one session. Yep. No, I, I um, for that kind of stuff, I really like plumbers for that. Like, I, I hesitate to have those style things here at LSFMM, and clearly, like this is my opinions and this is for all of us so with my opinion is not the only one that matters but um, I find that I like this venue for working getting things down and like it's good to kind of cross pollinate and be like hey look we can do these kind of cool things and I think that's a really good thing for lightning talks to follow up on stuff uh, but as far as like having like a, everybody sits in the room and while we like go through demos of cool things like this I is more for feedback so he tells us here's what I do, and we're like, wow, that's really cool. Right. Why don't you do this? And he says, well, why don't you do this? 
So I guess what I'm getting at is that because it's so important, his feedback to us and our feedback to him matters. Right. When I say our, I mean file system or memory management talking to VPF about tracing and vice versa. Right. Yeah, that's fair. I'd be curious if there's ever going to be some uh, feedback or response from uh, people that attended virtually, whether they actually got what they hoped to get out of it or whether this would ever happen again or whether you think it's a bad idea. So we had a we had a uh, session right after lunch with the virtual people where they got to all kind of show up and weigh in and stuff. And by and large, they were really happy. <coughs> you know, there's some things that we can do to make it a little bit smoother. But um, you know, especially for some of those that couldn't travel like all of a sudden because of COVID or whatever, like this went really well in, in all in all. So. Yeah, no, just a talking to John about this, but something the storage, I, I grew up in the storage track before I pulled over into MM, darn persistent memory, but um, something the storage track does or ha has done in the past is review updates to standards or new things that are coming down the pipe, like te technology wise. And um, we had a lot of talks on the mem memory track about CXL. And I think beyond knowing, being able to say CXL, I don't think people knew exactly what it was. So. Um, Maybe maybe planning planning to have some kind of tech days roadmap like here's here's the buzzwords that are coming down the pipe and what they mean can level set people before we jump into the problem sketching. It was kind of the reverse. We had a overview of what CXL was on Wednesday, and Monday and Tuesday were kind of like only the CXL people in the room were were clued in. It felt like at least. Okay, yeah, that sounds reasonable. I, and I know like you know his historically we've had like the big standards meeting where like. Um, fucking can't remember his name, Fred, I think, stands up here and tells us like all the things that the industry is doing. And uh, like, we, we didn't just didn't do that this year because I know Omar wasn't sure who was gonna be here and stuff. And like, I think that this year, as far as like scheduling, was just a bit of a mess because it was what? sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine why. So, but I, I think, I'm really happy with how this year went. Like, like this went really, really well, and I, it's just been so long, and there's been quite a bit of disconnect. And I think that next year we really make sure to like that. Those maybe that first morning, right? We have that somebody, everybody stands up and talks about stuff, gets our, us all up to date with like kind of general things, and then we can go into the rest of the conference to work. Well, one of the things that can be useful is just to have an agenda bashing thing where you stand up in the morning, all three tracks, and you say, we have these unfilled slots in the schedule, who would like to fill them? Right, yeah, and we've, we did a pretty good job of like filling things in throughout the tracks as things came up, but the other thing, we really wanted to have something in place ahead of time, again, for the Zoom and the virtual stuff, so. Um, okay, I will keep all of this in mind. Um, the oh, uh, also, would it be useful to collect people's slides so they'd show you and put them up somewhere? Yeah, that would be really nice if you guys can send me your slides. We're going to put all of the things were recorded, so they're all going to be up on the YouTube channel. Um, uh, pending some uh, discussions with some other track leaders, but generally speaking, everything that we've been in is going to be put up um, so we can go back and reference things. I think for, um, for next year, We'll definitely try to keep these scheduling things in mind and these topics stuff in mind. Actually, probably what we need is an LSFMM page where you can put, because you can't upload slides to YouTube. It's sort of, everybody thinks, yeah, video is great, but then suddenly it's a loose correlation. Right. We could use the kernel wiki just as an LSFMM page for, just do it by year, talk, slides, video, okay. and just go down like that. It might work. Uh, if you can delegate somebody to do that. Yeah, I, like that's definitely going to be one of those things where I find somebody else to do that. Yeah, I also want to be a, say a big thank you to LWN if we haven't already, because like I, I have exactly the same question. Like there were two of the lightning talks that were really useful. I just can't remember what they were, and so having a page would be useful. But at least LWN has already put up a a, a page for this, right? Yeah. So LWN is starting a page that has the, I guess it'll have articles about some of the talks. So at least it's better than nothing already. So I wanted to thank them. But it would be helpful if some of those presentations were up there because um, a couple of the lightning talks were really useful. Yeah, for sure. Excellent. Um, so as like usually we pick some poor schmuck to, to lead it next year. Um, a lot of us are not here right now, so I'm going to leave that that uh, that 
for later because I don't want to just throw somebody under the bus standing up here. Um, but other than that, uh, thank you, everybody. Can, can I say uh, that being on the program committee and watching all the dynamic decisions and stresses and, th and things that came up and, and, and watching how uh, Joseph handled it and, and kept, kept a level ahead and maybe threw in a few expletives to keep us on track. <laughs> Um, so th thank you, Joseph, for, for your leadership on this. Yeah. yeah, of course. I like, you know, we love this conference, and I really wanted to make sure that we were all happy with it, right? So I, I appreciate the support. Right? Like, you know, I most of my I complained a lot, but in reality, like, it wasn't that bad. The Linux Foundation did a majority of the work. They were fantastic, and. PC, you know, you guys are the ones keeping track of your communities and that's super helpful and being able to like figure out scheduling and topics and stuff like that is, it's tremendous. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm happy with how this turned out. I'm happy everybody's happy. And again, super huge thanks to Linux Foundation. Thanks to our sponsors who, uh, most of them were, stayed with us the entire time. So a lot of our sponsors were sponsors from 2020 and they just kept rolling over. They kept saying, yeah, no problem. We'll, we'll stick with you until you actually have it. And so that was phenomenal. And I, like, I feel like we only added two sponsors this year. So most of the sponsors that we had stuck with us the entire time. So that was, that was excellent. Um, and then of course, you know, LWN is always awesome. So we're super happy you guys showed up and, you know, continue to do the great work that you guys do. And I can't thank the AAV guys enough. They did a great job as well.